Hi, this is Roger Marsh with a special offer for you from Family Talk. During the month of April, we're giving you the opportunity to get a copy of a resource that's one of Dr. Dobson's best-selling books. It's called When God Doesn't Make Sense. Now, this is a resource that will help you hold on to your faith during difficult times, especially when it doesn't seem like God's even hearing your prayer. We'll be happy to send you a copy of Dr. Dobson's book, When God Doesn't Make Sense, as our way of thanking you for your gift of $20 or more to Family Talk right now. Go to drjamesdobson.org to learn more. That's drjamesdobson.org. Today on Family Talk. Well, hello, everyone. This is Dr. James Dobson, and you're tuned in to Family Talk. You know, in my 42 years of ministry, I have heard from thousands and thousands of moms around the country, and that's not an exaggeration. There was a time when I was receiving 250,000 letters and phone calls a month. And from these mothers, I have learned that many of them feel worn down by the high demands of motherhood. Women are faced with incredible amounts of stress these days, caring for kids, loving their husbands, and some of them also juggling a career. And most of these women are working toward building and maintaining healthy families, and they pour their lives into that. Now, the question is, how can they also carve out time to be alone with the Lord for times of prayer and Bible reading? How are they supposed to mature in their personal walk with God under all that stress? Spiritual restlessness and lack of growth are the real struggles that many moms face. Today's Family Talk broadcast is going to address this topic uh, in a conversation between my friend and colleague, Dr. Tim Clinton, and Becky Thompson. Becky is a popular author and blogger with a heart for mothers at every stage of parenting. You're going to enjoy this conversation. It's not just for mothers. It's for fathers and husbands to listen to, too, as you encourage the women in your life and also when you make time to be with the Lord. Let's listen now to Dr. Tim Clinton's interview with Becky Thompson on this edition of Family Talk. Joining me right now, special guest Becky Thompson. She's with us today to discuss her newest work, Truth Unchanging, Hearing God Daily in the Midst of Motherhood. Thank you for joining me as we discuss what I think is a crucial topic for moms. Thank you for having me, Dr. Clinton. It's a pleasure to join you and just to get to share my heart for this newest book. Uh, Becky, as we get started, you have a real burden uh, for 21st century Modern day mamas, you call them, modern day mamas. Right. Tell us where that comes from and why does it go so deep into your heart? You know, I just think that motherhood can be so isolating and so lonely, especially with social media the way that it is. And we set up these boxes around ourselves with expectations of what motherhood is supposed to look like and what it has to be. And with all of these other moms saying how great their motherhood is, when really deep down, we just hunger for true connection with each other on a deep level. And uh, and we want to know that we're not alone in what we're feeling and we're not alone in, in how we're relating to God in this season. And I just want to bring moms together and say, let's just drop all of the fake stuff and be honest with each other. Let's just say motherhood is what it really is, but then invite God right there into the midst of it. You know, we have a brand new grandbaby in our home, uh, Olivia Ann. My daughter, Megan, her husband, Ben, had their very first child, our first grandchild again. Um, and uh, she's changed the world. I mean, (laughs) she's turned the world upside down, should I say. Sure. (laughs) We call her Princess O. I mean, and she lets everybody know she's the boss, and if we don't think so, she reminds us that she's (laughs) the boss, Becky. You know that. Yeah. Um, You know, Megan was talking with me the other day and said, Dad, I'll tell you, I mean, it's just like I feel locked in. I want to go out and have some adult conversation. And But interestingly enough, she's learned already to attune herself to Olivia. Yeah. She knows what kind of cry she has. Mm-hmm. Uh, she knows the chaos that she's about to walk into, yeah. trying to calm her down. It's just a whole new world. Exactly. Um, her world has gotten, I, I would say, turned really upside down. It's beautiful, yeah. but it's like, oh my goodness, Dad, this is unbelievable. Right. In the midst of that, that's what you want to speak into, don't you? Yes, exactly. There's a lot of noise in there, first of all. Mm-hmm. 
And you know, that's just the thing. Our time as mothers begins with noise. Babies come into the world crying. You know, they come in making their needs known. And like you said, you know, your daughter's learned her her baby's cries and she's learned that additional noise in her life. And it's beautiful noise and it's welcome noise, but it's still noise. And as moms, we don't just have the noise of our babies, right? We have the noise of our own thoughts. Am I doing this right? Am I making the right decision? Should I go forward? Am I a good mom? Is this working out at all? And so the noise around us and the noise within us can be deafening. But here's the thing, in the middle of all of that noise, we need God's voice more than ever before in our lives. And so the issue is when we're surrounded by noise and when we're filled with internal noise, how do we find a space to hear God's voice speaking above all of that? Yeah, attuning ourselves to the voice of the Lord. I guess I would say it's hard with the pace and the pressure and the pain even of modern day life. It's hard to uh, slow it down. Mm-hmm. I like what you said. I think you opened up one of your devotionals in this brand new book, Truth Unchanging, talking about, hey, just sit down for a moment and listen. Mm-hmm. Listen to all the noise around you. And I was going to Megan's house and I was listening to all the sounds in my, in my mind's eye. I could, I could hear it all. Yeah. But then you said, no, remove yourself from that. Yeah. Where were you taking us? I want moms to say, if I were to remove this noise, if I were to tune all of this out for just a second, if I were to calm my own spirit by inviting God, just settle my anxious heart to calm my racing mind and just create a space, what is God saying? in that space? What does he want to say to us in that space? Because as moms, we do this thing where we put everybody before us. We, we are thinking of our children, our husbands, our, you know, our schedules, our jobs, our responsibilities and obligations. But God doesn't think of anyone more than he thinks of us. And so when we know that he's not distracted, he's not busy taking care of somebody else's laundry, he's not finding the soccer cleats that are missing, like he is fully tuned in to the heart of the mother, then what is God saying to her right where she is? And that's really the heart behind Truth Unchanging. It's 75 daily devotions that create a launching pad for a mom to say, this is what God is saying to me today. Let's continue this conversation throughout the day. Because if you can have that moment, you know, and, and if I can back up here, In my relationship with my husband or with friends, if I can create a space to have a five minute conversation, then I can sort of think about it through the rest of the day. I can, you know, grow in that in myself until we can circle back around. But throughout the day, God is with me. He's in my passenger seat. He's standing with me at the kitchen sink. He's right there speaking into my issues as a mom. And so if I can have this five minutes to read about what he said in his word, to be encouraged about what he's saying to me right here, then I don't have to put that conversation down and pick it up when I have free time. I can have it all day long inside my heart. It seems easy. (laughs) Everybody says, yeah, I I can work this out, but it's so difficult. Yeah. Even to get five minutes. Exactly. Everything continues to creep in and work against our affection Mm -hmm. or our relationship with God. Exactly. And so what do you say to the mom out there who's saying, I'm struggling trying to find it. I I do as much as I can, Mm -hmm. but I'm struggling. I'm struggling. First, I want her to know that very few aren't struggling. And there's so much freedom as we realize, you know, we are all doing the best that we can. There aren't this, you know, massive group out there who exists and and just understands their schedule and have no hiccups and what their kids are good. You know, you know, our kids get sick and we get extra projects and things get thrown in and our days get turned upside down. You know, your daughter learned this and it spells it, with colic and exactly. stuff. Exactly, like, man, my dad. We can't even calm her down. Right. You know, and so what do you do then when your schedule is always changing? How are you flexible? And that's the thing about Truth Unchanging, the way that it's written. It's just five minutes. It's like a long trip into the other room if you needed to, you know, take just a break for a second. It's, husband, have the kids for five minutes. I have to. And I think that's part of good mental health saying, I have to have these five minutes. You know, as moms, we often say, I need 30 minutes of 
you know, dedicated Bible time. And I know that if I started my day with 30 minutes of dedicated Bible time, everything would be, everything would be different. And we know that that's true. But then the baby wakes up before we do, you know, that somebody goes through a diaper in the night, we have to change the sheets. You just never know. And you can't always start your day as you intend. But if I can give you a five minute power bar bite of God's word that focuses your heart on what he has said in the past, reminding you that he is still speaking to you today, then you can have hope for the rest of the day ahead. And that's the thing, Dr. Clinton, is that God is still speaking directly to the heart of the mother. And you know, so often we think we have to begin in the word of God um, to have a conversation with him. And while that's true, where we need to have a foundation of scripture to know what God says and how he speaks, we also know that Jesus promises in John that he's sending his Holy Spirit to speak with us, that he's gonna guide and teach and direct. And we know that guiders and teachers and directors, they speak, they communicate. So we have this constant presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives who's encouraging and edifying and pointing us back to Jesus and the Father and speaking to our hearts. So even for the mom who says, I don't have 30 minutes to read my Bible, but I can tune my heart into the voice, the kind, tender voice of God's Holy Spirit then I can know that he is with me and speaking to me and encourage me about what I'm facing right now, whether it be colic or a changed schedule or an exhausting day. That relationship with God, you've got to understand is substance, it's life. Mm -hmm. It's as meaningful as that bond connection with your own daughter or your son uh, in your life. And he could be six months or he could be 16 or 24. Mm -hmm. You hear what I'm saying? I do. And that is what you're trying to speak into us right now. Exactly. You know that? And I love what you're saying because I do believe that it could be a song that comes on the radio, mm-hmm. Mac Powell song or something. Mm-hmm. It could be um, a text message. Mm-hmm. It could be the Lord working through a smile yeah. on somebody's face or a note dropped uh, into our life in a moment, right? Exactly. And you know, that's just the thing. And the more we recognize those as God, and his heart and his love for us, the cool thing is the more that we can begin to step into a place of speaking to others with our love. You know, there are always people waiting on the other side of God's voice for us. You know, sometimes we're that person that God is speaking to us and we needed it, but other times he speaks to us for others and says, you be the one to reach out. Because there's there's this part about obedience and, and relationship that grows as we spend time listening to the Lord and following what he says. It becomes easier to recognize his voice in our daily life and it becomes easier to follow his promptings. Yeah. I um, was going through your devotional again. Our special guest today is Becky Thompson. She's the author of Hope Unfolding, has a brand new workout called Truth Unchanging, Hearing God Daily in the Midst of Motherhood. Not a lot of works out there, by the way, for moms. There's some things out there. And I know there's some blogs out there. Mm -hmm. You're a big blogger and I think millions of followers and people who love you, Becky. But again, you want to speak words of life and you're trying to take motherhood. You've built this devotional around everyday experiences. Yes. By the way, you bring the word alive. Oh, wow. Thanks. Yeah, you do. You (laughs) bring it alive. I love it. You see motherhood as holy work. Mm -hmm. I love what you said about motherhood being holy work. You want to share with us what you mean? It's so true. You know, we don't often think as the ordinary daily, what you might consider mundane tasks as holy work, but we are shaping you know, our children's view of God. We are shaping how they're going to encounter him. We're shaping the next generation. We are inviting God into our home. We're creating moments for our children to encounter him personally. We are doing holy work. And I think, you know, for anybody in any field of, or any level of responsibility, when you invite God to be part of it, it changes from ordinary to holy. It changes from regular and mundane to important kingdom building work. And what would happen? What would happen, Dr. Clinton, if moms recognized that the hours that they spent holding that sweet newborn or praying over the lives of their children or just you know, buttering the sandwich before it goes into the lunchbox was a way that they were ministering to the hearts of their children. What if they saw the impact as eternal? Because that's what it is. Everything that happens in the context of family, 
you know, ripples out for eternity. I think about Megan when she was little. I would read to her. Um, we sang in the car a lot. They are incredible observers. They watch everything. Uh, those moments that you pray, those things um, are how I think God works through us to speak into their life. Mm-hmm. You, you hear what I'm saying? Yep. And so in order to be able to do that meaningfully, you've got to be poured into. Exactly. Exactly. And that's just the thing. You know, we put everybody before ourselves, but God's not putting anyone before us. And so we have to stop and say, I have to fill up if I'm going to have anything to pour out. I have to make sure I'm rooted and planted in truth if I'm going to connect my children to truth. And we have to make sure our roots go deep. And so it's crazy that in this season of motherhood, when we need God more than ever, we have literally no time, I mean, very little time in our schedules to make those roots go deep, to make sure we're anchored in truth. And that that right there is why God put this work on my heart, to make sure that moms have a moment to encounter Him in His Word. And you know, through Truth and Changing, I start in the beginning of Scripture, and I go, you know, 75 devotions, I only made it through Acts. You know, I, I start and I remind my readers that God has been speaking since the beginning of time. Yes, He has. He has always been a conversational God. He made Adam and Eve with the ability to not just hear His voice, but respond to His commands, you know? And so this tells me that we were made, formed in His likeness with this space within us to hear Him speak. And that hasn't changed. When He sent Jesus, it made it so that we could have this communication with the Father again, communication with His heart again. And throughout the book, I just walk moms through all of these moments when God spoke in different ways. Maybe it was speaking audibly. Maybe it was through... um, prophets. Maybe it was through a dream. Maybe it was through an encounter with an angel. Maybe it was in some other supernatural way. God doesn't always speak to us in the way that we're listening for his voice. So what I want moms to do is begin to open up their heart and say to themselves, if God speaks to me in a way that I'm not expecting, am I listening? Am I listening for what God might be saying in this moment, even if it doesn't come the way I'm imagining it would? Are you listening? Can you hear his voice? Is he there with you? Do you believe he is? Those are some really tough questions, important questions. Mm -hmm. Expound on a piece for us, the difference between ritual and relationship, because I think when we are frantic, when we're out of control, Mm -hmm. we can tend to drift into religion, ritual, Mm -hmm. rather than hearing the voice of God. Exactly. You know, I think a lot of ritual and religion says, if you follow these steps, then you'll have access to God. If you know, if you do this, if you show up a certain way. And the Lord loves righteousness. He loves it. And we know that. And we know that he shows up all throughout his word in order. You know, he, he shows up in these wonderful, you know, systems and structures and all of these things. There's nothing wrong with system or structure. But when we begin to worship the system and the structure rather than the God that we encounter within the system and the structure, then we miss the relationship that's available to us. It's just the same thing as a mom getting into routine. I wake up in the morning, I fix my kids breakfast, I drop them off at school, I pick them up from school. And then we start thinking that that's good mothering. Right. Right. When it may be that we're getting everything right, but we're not really present. And we're not connecting like we have the ability to connect with our kids. And, you know, just like we need to create those moments to connect with our children on a heart level and not just in a we're in the car together, being you know, going to the next activity. You know, we have this opportunity to connect with God himself in a relationship and not just in the things that we're doing. This is obvious, but do you think God... Um, really cares about us personally, maybe our marriages, our relationship with our kids. I know we we teach our kids that there's nothing too simple to pray for, Mm -hmm. you know that, but Becky, um, how do we apply that in our own personal everyday walk? I love that question. I love it because I know, I know it because I've experienced that God cares so passionately about the minor details of our lives. You know, how do we apply this? We just begin to invite him to be a part of those little things that we're doing. 
I just want to share just quickly from the book. There was one moment where I was about to walk out of my house and I heard God say to me, you can't run the washing machine at your new rental house while you're gone. And I thought I've run this washing machine plenty of times. It's fine. I ignored it. I let it go. I came back and the house was flooded. I read the this drain, story. It was amazing. It was so funny. The drain came out and it spilled everywhere. And I thought, why didn't I just listen? Why didn't I just, but God cares about about washing machine hoses and God cares about the little hiccups in our day. He cares about how we're speaking to our kids, about our lack of patience or peace. He cares and he wants us to invite him to be a part of it. You know, one other story I share is about how a blind man comes to Jesus. Jesus sees that he's blind and yet Jesus asks him, what is it that you want me to do for you? I mean, the guy doesn't want a tropical vacation, Jesus. He wants his sight. And yet Jesus says, what is it that you want me to do for you? And he gives the man a chance to ask him, I want to see, give me my sight. And I feel like that's how we are. You know, God knows everything that we need. He knows everything that we will ever need. And yet he gives us this opportunity to grow relationship by asking him, God, I need peace. God, I need patience. And as we ask and he answers, it develops this relationship like we talked about. And he cares about all of it, every last little bit. One of my favorite thoughts uh, through the years has become, God sees what we often think goes unnoticed. Mm. And I think a lot of moms, and I'm, I'm gonna reflect back on my wife, Julia, and my daughter, Megan, for a moment. Their faithfulness, you understand, that daily grind. Yes. Yeah. Um, and just wondering, what in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. What in the world, God? <laughs> um, can you speak, as we kind of wrap up uh, today, Becky, to her about being faithful in those little things, being mindful that God is in those moments with her mm -hmm. and that will see her through? You know, my husband and I went through a really... Um, traumatic time before we became parents and we lost a baby. And I remember going back through the moments of that loss and just being so devastated and feeling so empty and really mourning what had happened. But I asked God to show me where he was specifically because I couldn't lose this baby and lose my faith in a good and loving God too. So I said, Lord, where were you? when I was hurting. Where were you when I felt alone? Where were you? And he showed me. I prayed and he showed me exactly where he was. And I had this moment of, you know, right after I lost the baby, Jesus coming and holding me mm -hmm. like I would hold my children that would be born and I'd, I'd get to hold in my arms someday. But he was holding me in that moment. For the moms listening, I want you to know that there hasn't been one moment of your silence that you haven't shared with anybody that God hasn't seen, that God hasn't been a part of, that God wasn't walking alongside of you or holding you close. In those moments that feel ordinary, where you wonder if there's any value, where you feel like you are just going through routine, I want you to know that Jesus has been with you and he's been strengthening you even when you felt like you couldn't go on. He was the strength that helped you finish that day. He's the strength that'll help you finish today and he's the strength that'll help you go on tomorrow when all of your days blur together. He wants to meet you right there in the middle of all of it because he loves you even more than you could ever love your own children. Ah, that's the message I think that jumps up every page in Becky Thompson's new book, Truth Unchanging, Hearing God Daily in the Midst of Motherhood. Becky, thanks for being with thanks us. Thanks so much for having me. Well, those are incredible words of encouragement for moms who may be feeling overwhelmed or even defeated. God understands your constant struggles and hardships because he has never left your side. As the Apostle Peter said, we must daily cast our cares on Jesus because he cares for us. I'm Roger Marsh, and you've been listening to Dr. Tim Clinton's conversation with author Becky Thompson here on Family Talk. Her new book is called Truth Unchanging, and it is in stores now, so I hope you'll find a copy for yourself. You can visit today's broadcast page at drjamesdobson.org for more information about Becky Thompson and her many other helpful books. That's drjamesdobson.org, and then click onto the Broadcast button. 
Well, that wraps up our time for today. Be sure to join us again tomorrow as Dr. Dobson will read his somber and inspiring April newsletter. It's full of powerful thoughts on what it means to bear our cross and to follow Christ wholeheartedly. You will not want to miss what Dr. Dobson has to say coming up next time right here on Family Talk. I'm Roger Marsh. Thanks for listening. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute. This is James Dobson again. Before we go, I'd like to remind you that Family Talk is a listener-supported program. Thank you so much for listening and for being part of this ministry. For more information, go to drjamesdobson.org. Hi, this is Dr. Tim Clinton for the James Dobson Family Institute. Are you leaving a lasting and godly legacy? When you think about your family after you're gone, are you worried about them? Or are you confident they'll hold on to what you've taught them? At the Dobson Family Institute, we're committed to helping you understand the importance of passing on your faith, not only to your children, but to your children's children too. Check out drjamesdobson.org today for helpful hints, tips, and advice to help make this happen. Your legacy matters.